Hi everyone, and welcome to our channel. In this episode, I'd like to touch on the subject of using HDU, high density urethane, in your CNC projects. HDU is a unique product. It's lightweight, easy to cut, and can be finished with a multitude of finishes. Paint, stain, gold leaf, silver leaf, metallic paints, acrylic. For those who have used it, you know what I'm talking about. It holds detail very well and has great qualities for the sign making industry. What you're looking at in the background are some of the projects I've created and cut out of HDU. This video is not to be the end all absolute authority on how to finish HDU, but rather to give you some guidelines and some suggestions, as well as introducing you to an interesting technique that you may not have known about or may never have thought about actually trying. HDU is a closed cell foam insulation material. Works very well to insulate buildings, aircraft, it was invented by Otto Baer in 1937 after he successfully mixed some chemicals together to create a dry foam material. Polyurethane was further developed into many different applications, ranging from shoe soles and cushions to industrial uses. If you're not familiar with high density urethane, you may be familiar with the spray foam that's used around your home to fill gaps. That's urethane foam. HDU comes with a range of densities from four pounds per cubic foot through 31 pounds per cubic foot. The more dense the foam, the heavier it is, but also resistant to bumps and bruises. It makes an ideal replacement for wood, but please know it is not structural. Replacement of wood means trim work or mill work or carvings and things of that nature. It's great for using that material in signage and pattern making. One of the more important aspects of it is that it is impermeable to any type of liquid, including water and solvents, making it a great choice for exterior signs. I've often wondered how can I take an existing product or project and slightly twist it? I look at HDU in the same fashion. Many people who use it, like myself, cut 3D models into it but in the end, it's still a flat piece. I started to wonder if it was possible to manipulate the HDU to create more depth and dimension. So in this video, I'd like to share with you a little trick that I learned a long time ago. Here's a few examples of what I'm talking about. If you were going to try and recreate cutting these 3D models in HDU, you would need some rather thick stock material which is quite expensive. But here's a technique you may find interesting. Did you know that HDU can be bent and formed? I'm guessing not a lot of people knew that. And if bent successfully, it will maintain that, that shape. So here's the process that I use. Here's a badge that I've cut. I first sprayed it with gold paint and then added gold leaf and a little bit of silver leaf. If you look at the back side of it, you can see the bend that was created through this process. This is not for everybody, but it could certainly make your project stand out and look slightly different. So how is this process of bending HDU possible? Let's take a look. I first designed and cut my 3D model on my CNC machine out of HDU. Now the trick is you need to heat up the HDU. I have found that for half inch thick material, if you heat it to 350 degrees for about an hour, you'll be successful. Now there's no guidelines per se on the temperature or the length of time. 300 for an hour may work. 400 degrees for 20 minutes won't work. It winds up being right around that 350 degrees for about an hour. Of course, the thicker the material, the longer it may have to be heated, as well as you may need to heat it from both sides. So the entire piece becomes warm. Once you have your form created, you can take your heated HDU and set it into that shape and, and gently apply pressure. This becomes tricky because if you apply the pressure too quickly or too slowly, 
you could break the skin of the face that you're trying to bend. A couple notes. The HDU really does not get as hot to the touch as I thought. I would still recommend wearing gloves, but it's not going to be at that 350 degrees. Another note, it cools very, very quickly. So you have to act fast to bend it to the shape that you want. Too fast, you'll crack the face of it. Too slow, and it will start to cool. So there's a balancing act. Once cooled, that shape will remain. You can always go back and reheat it and reshape it if you want to. And of course, give it some time to cool and it's ready to finish. Finishing tools for the HDU are rather simple. Simple sandpaper, 120 to 220 grit, a flat hand sander for the big flat areas, scrapers, a utility knife, and a plastic palette knife with some sandpaper glued to the edge of it. That comes in handy for those tough little areas to get into. If you happen to break a piece or bump a piece or you need to do some repairing, Bondo works well, as does polyester glazing putty. They could be sanded and smoothed to match the original surface. If you need to glue a few pieces together, use a polyurethane glue, something like Gorilla Glue, but be careful with that because that will expand and move the parts apart from one another. This is a finished product that I quickly did, spray painted it with some silver spray paint and added some amber shellac for the gold. It's just one approach. So the questions many people have are, do you have to prime it before you paint it? No, not necessarily. Depends upon the finish that you want. If you want fine, shiny finishes, then yes, it's important to use a primer to be able to fill in the cells of the HDU foam. Don't forget, it looks more like a sponge than not. Also, as a side note, urethane falls somewhere between plastic and rubber. So we're not quite sure what to call it. Some finishing tips that may be important for you. I like to use compressed air to blow off the dust. Otherwise, you can't apply a good finish. If you want a really smooth finish when you've completed your project, you may need two or three coats of primer. And the primer should have some high solids in it. A high solid primer fills the cells more efficiently than a typical primer. Keeping in mind, two or three coats of a primer may fill in some of the small details of your carving. So be prepared to maybe cut your V carving, for example, slightly deeper so the paint won't fill in those thin V carved lines. I recommend using Matthews primer as an undercoat. It's a great product that contains a high level of solids, so it will fill in the cells of the HDU. I recommend a gravity feed HDLP spray gun, 2.0 tip at 38 PSI, four parts primer, one part hardener, Give it about 25 minutes or more between coats. If you sand between the coats, know that the primer will be lighter. The dark areas are the low spots. So as you're sanding, make sure you're winding up with an even color. Finish coat, spray it with a 1.3 to 1.5 tip in your spray gun, and you should be good to go. In the notes below, I've included some websites of the manufacturers of HDU, as well as distributors of the product. I've also included some websites of places for finishes, metallic finishes, paints and stains and things of that nature. I hope you've enjoyed this video and something a little bit different. If you want to learn more about the Vectric software, please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click on the bell to be notified of our next video. If you have any questions, send me an email mm at mazalik.com. Enjoy. Enjoy.